Hi, this is Kara from the Special Needs Mom podcast. And this is Angela from Especially Organized, Sensible Solutions for Special Needs Moms. We have this heart for special needs moms. And so we thought, you know what, let's combine forces. And we have come up with what we're calling the purge party. And you can pretty much guess what it is. It's a party where we're going to come together and we're going to purge or in general, accomplish a goal, a small goal together. So we have set this for January 27th, starting at eight o'clock for my Pacific Coast people. Which means 11 o'clock for all of you on the East Coast. So this is an opportunity. If you have something on your to-do list that has just been stuck there and you are wanting to move it up on the list, you're wanting to tackle, maybe it's a space or an area of your home or a category in your home that has just needed a little time and attention. This is your opportunity for you to be online with us while you work and have access for us to help you answer your questions, help guide you and just serve you for those two hours. Yeah, exactly. And I think you can tell like what we've designed is just this very high level of support for that project that you just haven't been able to tackle on your own. The thing that we are envisioning is that you get to leave this purge party feeling so accomplished because you did the thing, you started the year off getting that thing done that you you were stuck on last year. And so it's a momentum builder, if you will. You can go ahead and sign up. We have a link ready for you. And we are offering this for $40 for the whole experience. Absolutely. And we hope you'll join us. I think it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a great group of moms of special needs kids. So we all get each other. We all have an understanding of what it's like to have something on our to-do list, but just we haven't been able to tackle it yet. So I hope that you will join us. We're super excited to bring this to you and we are thrilled to work with you. All right. We'll see you all there. Hi, I'm Kara Riska, life coach, wife, and the mother of four incredible and unique kids. It wasn't all that long ago that my son received a diagnosis that had my world come crashing down. I completely lacked the ability to see past the circumstances, which felt impossible, and the dreams I once had for my life and family felt destroyed. Fast forward past many years of surviving and not at all thriving, and you'll see a mom who trusts that she can handle anything that comes her way and has access to the power and grace that once felt so completely lacking. I started the Special Needs Mom podcast to create connection and community with moms who find themselves up against what feels impossible. My intention is to spark the flare of possibility in your own life and rekindle the dreams that you hold impossible now. This isn't a podcast about your special needs child. This is a podcast about you. If you're a mom who feels anxious, alone, or stuck, and you are in the right place. Welcome. Hello, and welcome back to the Special Needs Mom podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I'm your host, Kara Riska. And today I have a really special guest today. Her name is Robin Rosenberg. She is yet another introduction from a previous guest, Robin Cortez, who uh, recorded the amazing episode on resiliency. So definitely go check that out if you haven't already listened to it. It is one of the most loved episodes to date. She told me about Robin, who is the founder and CEO of Tiny Superheroes, which is a mission-driven company which empowers kids and families as they overcome illness or disability. Robin's also a wife and mother to three young boys and lives in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, now, when I prepare for episodes, I usually do, do a little bit of research about my guests, and I get to be a little curious about who they are, what drives them, what have they done. I'm typically less interested in what they've accomplished as a person and more about who they were along the way and where they struggled and kind of the story, the path to get there. And as I researched Robin, I was like, holy mackerel, (laughs) this woman, when she's been doing Tiny Superheroes for a long time. And so I was just really blown away at the way that she basically just kept saying yes. And it was not easy. 
And she is, I think, also in a unique position where she's not herself a special needs mom. And she's chosen to be amongst the community, serving the community. I don't know. I'm particularly struck by that because... I think I even joke about it in in one of the coming episodes is most people don't choose to be part of this community. You kind of are here by default. And so that she chose and chooses to be in for all that it means to feel and to feel the impact of this community. I think it is, I don't necessarily want to say inspiring, but I want to say it is something I deeply respect. And when somebody's chosen to be here, uh, it inspires me to listen to her a little bit more closely. As I listened to Robin in our episodes, and I actually had to split us up into two separate episodes because we were so <laughs> engaged in conversation from like literally the moment we got on Zoom together that I, we didn't even like basically say hi. We just started talking. It was actually really funny. And so you're going to notice that I'm splitting up the in review into two pieces. This is going to be part one. And next week will be coming out part two. Listen to them both. But I wanted to split them up to be a little bit more bite sized and easy to consume. But you're going to notice that um, there's really no rhyme or reason to where we go in the conversation. And it's because, yes, I prepare for episodes of what I expect to talk to talk about. And usually even better is what ends up happening. And so with Robin, we went a number of different directions and her insight, the way that she was able to glean her insight from being part of the community, I think is really, really valuable. And so I hope you will listen in and see where her wisdom and insight might touch you. And where it might inspire you, hopefully, my hope is, and I think this is Robin's as well, even though we didn't talk about it, is that especially the interview that you're about to hear now will inspire you to surround yourself among women, particularly, who are doing or are in the process of becoming who you want to be. That might make more sense as you listen to the episode, We talked a little bit about her transformation, actually, as a human, as she has watched mothers lose their children and build the belief because she surrounded herself with people that she saw doing this and not just doing it and surviving, but actually thriving. And so at the uh, end of episode two, you're going to actually get to hear all about what Robin has available as far as ways to get involved with her organization. And I will also link those uh, on to these show notes so that you don't have to wait because I, whether it's through being mom together, the group coaching program that I offer or something through tiny superheroes. Yes. (laughs) Fill your community with, I mean, this sounds so cheesy, but possibility. If you see something happening in front of you with your own two eyes, it changes you. It changes what you go after for yourself. And it sounds like I'm kind of creating my own episode here. (laughs) So I'm going to keep this short. So in this episode, it's a little bit shorter, but it's definitely power packed. The other thing I wanted to mention is that the early part of this interview has nothing to do with being a special needs mom. Robin asked me a question. This was like not intended to be part of the podcast, but she asked me, how did I start this? And so I kind of just told her the longer version of the story. And I left that in there because I thought it would actually be, I mean, I hope it's interesting to hear, but I wanted to be an example of somebody that didn't necessarily feel ready, but felt called. And I mean, half the time, (laughs) I'm wondering if I'm ready. And I think that's how most people are as they step out, especially into a helping organization, that it doesn't always feel easy. 
So I wanted to keep this part in there. One, so you guys could know me better, but also just to see how this how this podcast came to life. It was literally stepping one foot after another, and it was a um, a long, circuitous journey. Okay, so if you feel like you are in a long, circuitous journey, welcome. You are in the right place. So let's get into the episode. We're going to jump right into it. There's no like, hey, how's it going? Glad to be here. Like we just jump right into conversations. Enjoy. Make sure you pay attention. It it goes fast because we are both excited to be together. One last thing before we start. We are coming up on the anniversary of this podcast and I'm really excited about it. I have a very special episode in store. It is sharing the stories that were created and generated through the Own Your Story workshop. And I listened to them yesterday and they were so powerful, so moving. And I think it's just the best way to celebrate the connection that was created in this podcast as I share these stories with you. So that's coming as well. Also coming, I'm going to be doing a back to school series that I'm dreaming up still. So if you have any requests or things that you really want to hear about, please don't be shy. I'd love to hear. And I'm going to be over here dreaming up all different ways to to hang out with you on the podcast and to provide valuable conversations that hopefully is part of your community of thriving moms. All right, let's get into the episode. Um, okay, so you've been, how did you like start this? Uh, how did I start this? That's a good question. <laughs> I I listen to a lot of business podcasts. And one of my friends and mentors, uh, Amy Porterfield, she um, has a podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy. Cool. And she, like, she's like, it's really fun because she was my neighbor. That's how I knew her. And she went from just being like, you know, starting her business to now she's like one of the most, you know, like she's very well known in in her niche. And I love who she is. I just, I I see her heart and I love it. So I've always just listened, um, thinking I'm going to, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with my life one day. And this is like 10 years ago. This is even maybe before I had all the situation with my son. But uh, so anyhow, I would just drive around, listen, drive around, listen, and just kind of dream, dream, dream. And I had a lot of previous ideas. And one of the podcasts um, was with her and Marie Forleo. I don't know if you know Marie Forleo. No, but, but I'm writing all these names. Yeah, down. yeah. You would, being a, a business person, an entrepreneur, I think you would, would love these people. Um, it's just because their, their baseline is that every being has something to share. And to me, I'm like, yes. And so then they, they really, you know, mostly focus on women. Um, anyhow. So I listened to a podcast between them and Marie Forleo shared that she was a life coach early in her career. And I was like, Oh, interesting. I had kind of heard of a life coach, but coach, but not taken it seriously. I thought, well, that sounds funny. (laughs) Yeah. Right. I know. I know. Right. And so, um, and us life coaches definitely are like, oh man, like it does sound like a gimmick. I get it. But, um, so that had me interested in being a life coach. And so then long story short, I, uh, enrolled in the school, got trained as a life coach. And I always knew one day I would have a podcast. I don't think I thought it would be as soon, but for me, as a coach, I was not necessarily like, I didn't go into coaching thinking I'm going to help the special needs mom community. I definitely didn't think I was at the place where I was ready to do like just to, to step in and be a leader. So I, what did I do? I fumbled around for years and then it was, I got a letter another letter, an email from my son's school about a behavioral episode. And I happened to be on my way to go be meeting with one of um, a team that I work with in in coaching. And we have a way of starting our meetings where um, everybody shares um, just a few minutes um, from the prompt of what do you, what do you want to share to be present today? And so I said, you know what? I just want to read this letter. And I read the letter. And it was for me, I just didn't want to be alone in receiving a letter like I did. And 
And so for me, it was in that conversation with, with this group uh, of coaches, I was like, I have to serve this community. Like I need me. <laughs> yeah, and there's wow, no, yeah. there's no, to my knowledge, I'm seeing a couple of people come on now, which is a great, was amazing, but there's so many people serving kids, which is amazing, but there's a huge gap in serving Mm -hmm. the parents of special needs children. And so that's kind of what I, that's what this podcast is all about. And that's what I'm all about and specifically mothers. And so that's how we got, that's the long story. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's funny. The, I came to the same conclusion through the pandemic that like, oh, if, if I want these amazing kids to feel empowered, but they live with somebody who has no identity and no self-worth and no confidence and no, then that will work. You know, yeah, wow. It won't work. Huh? It's interesting to me. Cause I obviously have, you know, from searching you from, you probably studying, don't, yeah. Yeah. from studying you, I've seen you've been doing, you've been doing this for a while, right? This is, you're not new to this, this show. And so that's really intriguing to me that like, it was like, it hit you during the pandemic. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah. I started like journaling on Facebook live and I like invited people to like journal with me, which is, it's like heart kind of journaling. I don't know. And it was like the very beginning of quarantine. And I was just like, Hey, to like the community, if anyone wants to journal with me. And so, uh, I mean, I still do it two nights a week. Like, I put in a lot of time with the moms kind of accidentally, but like a lot of like time. And it was just like, you can never unsee the loneliness. Like I, you know, I knew that they, I knew that there was lonely I knew there was isolation. Like I knew all that, but I didn't really know the depths of where like, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're story about your child with special needs is really not your biggest issue. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. You're like, wow. Like that's all people see and it's bad or hard or whatever. Right. It's like a challenge. But, um, when I'm talking to you, that doesn't even come up because like the actual challenge that you're dealing with is so much more deeply rooted it like in the same way that like I have those issues right it's like it's not like oh well you have a special needs kid all of your issues go away (laughs) now you're just taking it's like oh man it's crazy yeah okay so um gosh there's so many things that were coming up in my head um that I want to touch back on yes would I one of the things that brought up when you shared that was I was thinking about, I was, ta- I, I led a, um, a workshop recently uh, on speci- on storytelling, on story crafting specifically, not because I think it's fun to tell stories, but I think the stories that we're telling ourselves, the way that we narrate our story has everything to do with the way that we experience our life. So I, I created this, this workshop. And one of the gals that came uh, didn't happen to have a child, a child, even though it was geared towards moms with special needs children. And we were talking afterwards and she said, she was just kind of reflecting like, yeah, like I didn't even know those things existed. And it really hit me Mm -hmm. that because I think my experience as a special needs mom, when I'm sharing with another person, oftentimes it's, it's apparent to me when I'm sharing that they don't get it. Mm-hmm. And it's a little, or, and it's, I don't think it's that they don't care. I just don't think they have a space in their brain to hold what I have. Mm-hmm. And so it hit me the way that this friend of mine said this, because I was like, yeah, if you have no concept of this, this disability, this condition existing, of course you can't like connect with that mom and hearing. Yes. I think some people are better at being curious and asking questions, but I thought it was just really interesting that that's, I think one of the reasons that moms feel so alone is because as the storyteller, we don't realize it's actually our job to be able to like get the story into other ears. Like we Mm -hmm. can't control how it's heard. Like I'm not saying that, but like we have to be able to like learn how to share. 
-hmm. if we want to stop feeling so alone. And that's, that's where it like definitely has me inspired to like, okay, how can I also uh, keep the conversation going of yeah. these moms of how, how to essentially be responsible for not feeling so alone and not to put the blame on them. That's not what I'm no, saying. But, but like, like, it's grabbing it's, your own happy. Like, it's almost like, just yes. like, okay, like let's choose happiness. But like, what does that actually mean? Like we can actually like work towards that, you know? Exactly. And yeah. okay. So you know what? It's funny. Uh, <laughs> we, I am recording and we okay, didn't perfect. even necessarily start it, but I'm going to, we're going to keep rolling because perfect. I'm I good. Yeah. Why stop here? Choosing joy. So I think a lot of times when we hear that, it almost can sound insulting mm -hmm. uh, and stick with me here for a second, because I definitely agree in choosing joy, but I also think that people misunderstand it to that. You always have to choose joy, but like in everything you have to choose to joy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Maybe half the time and, or maybe even just one tenth of the time and the other times are different emotions, but it's not that we have to be joyful about everything. And I totally had this confused in my head in my early years. And I was almost like upset at the idea of being like, of being told to be grateful. Cause it was like, I'm sorry, I am not grateful for many things. Yeah. Um, and so, okay, back to the choosing joy. What, one of your quotes actually from my cyber stalking of you, it says, when we think of superheroes, we think of people who are stronger than normal. And that's really what these kids are. The biggest thing they've taught me, you, is that you can choose joy in your life. And so what do you, how do you see this choosing joy working out in, in the wild? Yep. So there's a amazing family in our community and there are three children and it was not until after the third child was born that the older two children were diagnosed with a severe de de degenerative terminal disease. So um, the third child does not have it. And this family is living a very hard life. So essentially this mom is watching her two children die right before her eyes. I can't, I can't imagine that. Like, I can't imagine that, right? This woman has been able to realize that if I spend the rest of their life waiting for them to die, mm -hmm. I lose, I lose the rest of their life before they even die. But if I choose that today, they're here. And today, this is where we're at. And of course I would change the path if I could. And of course I'll do everything I can, but like right now it's dinner time and we're all here. Like what a great day. And it is remarkable to see her live that. And again, not without grief, not without pain, not without anger, not without any of that, but like with all of that to be able to still choose joy, I think is where it's like, magical because I don't think we should deny any of those feelings that are, I think it would be harmful to deny any of those feelings, but to be capable of having those feelings and still seeing beyond them is like where I'm amazed. I'd say like one of the most powerful things about my journey with tiny superheroes that I never expected was, um, we have an angel squad. So we have a, a lot of families whose children do die young. And I was never prepared for that. But what has like been so transformative to me is that when you see a family survive that and even thrive, you know, and there's a lot of guilt about that. Like it's a, like a lot of guilt about that. But when you see a mom be able to smile after losing her child. Like, I don't think there's anything stronger in the whole world. 
I agree. There is a foundation that actually has supported our family significantly. It's local. It's called Mitchell Thorpe Foundation, named after their son who passed away, I think at 15 of an undiagnosed illness. So he suffered for about five years and passed away. And they now run an organization that raises money for children or families with disabilities and diseases and illnesses. They were literally a lifeline to us in the sense of they came under us and financially supported us through the hardest time for us. It wasn't just the the money, although the money was amazing. It was seeing this mom who had lost her son. And I, I knew I had my son that I was able to see her just living her life and like honoring her son's existence, loving him as he was no longer on this earth. And it, I think it gave me hope. And I, I don't even, it, what, in the sense of like hope in the capacity of human beings to be resilient. Yeah. It gives and me that, hope for me. That like, hope is, a, is worth a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like even as someone who has never had a child with a terminal diagnosis at all, or even the threat of it, right? I'm pretty acutely aware that things change like on a dime. And so probably more aware than people who aren't working in the communities that we're working with, like how quickly things can change. It's like um, prior to witnessing things like that, I I don't think I would have thought I could survive it. Mm -hmm. And now it's still like, if you could write the worst thing that could ever happen, that's still the thing, right? Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I am confident that I would survive it. And the people who I see thriving after they survive it are the people who are giving, which is what you were seeing in that woman, I think. Yes. Here's what's interesting. What strikes me about what you just said. I was, I was wondering, I was like, I wonder what has given you that confidence and I will want to hear that answer, but my, my guess, my suspicion is, is that you have seen with your own two eyes, multiple mom after mom who is doing it Mm -hmm. and the power of seeing somebody doing something that you didn't know if it was possible. I think, oh gosh, like how valuable is that? Because as a mom with a special needs child, we we don't usually choose to be part of the crew. (laughs) Like you don't go choose this club. It comes to you. And typically your community is not filled with other special needs moms. Yeah. You might have one or two, but the chances that they're going to be really understanding what's happening for you, is quite low. And so therefore automatically you don't see people in your shoes doing it well in, in when I say, well, thriving, happy, balanced, uh, not overwhelmed, feeling uh, capable, feeling confident, all these things that moms say they are desperate to have. And so I think the power of being in a community where you see people on different parts of the road, further ahead, behind you, and that even where you're at, you can give back to the people maybe earlier in the journey that I think that that is one of the most, I think for me, like, I won't say it makes it worth it (laughs) having my son have these challenges, but it does bring value to it. And so it brings value to my story that I can use something that was really, really horrible and continues to be really horrible for good. Mm -hmm. What more could you want? Yeah. I also, this made me think of this, but I'm not, it's not fully thought through. But we, let's say America, let's limit it to America. I don't think it's limited to America. Like we have an idea of what it's supposed to look like. But like, who said it's supposed to look like that? You know? And like, no one, including me, would, you would never wish suffering on anybody, especially your child. So like, I definitely want to clarify that, that like, of course, you would do anything to take away the suffering. But the funny thing to me, my, like, so like, let's say that, let's say that um, 
the physical suffering is not there. It's like, nobody said that this, nobody, like, what, where did it happen that we all thought it had to look the same way? Like, what I think is beautiful is when it's like, holy cow, your family is completely different than mine. And you're doing things completely different than I ever even would have processed. Like, that makes me so excited. And so like when I meet kids who are different, it's like, to me, it's like an adventure because it's like, this is way more, this is way more fun because like, I actually don't know you and I actually like couldn't guess what your life is like. And I don't have an idea in my head of what your life will be like or where you should do or go to school or become or make money or live in what kind of house. Like I have all of those things are like out of the picture. And now it's like this great adventure of like, your life is an adventure, you know? And again, there's so much about it that we would change, but I hate, I don't hate. I think it's interesting that the very beginning, it all starts with this picture perfect journey of children, of cute children growing up to be nice, capable humans. You know what I mean? Who produce Mm -hmm. the same. Yes. And like anything other than that is like bad. Yes. I think that I really had to let go of the model of what I thought success in life was to, to not kind of be stuck at like disappointment for what my son's future might look like. Yeah. It's interesting. And and that's real and that's okay. But it's like, if you can get a little freed from that, your, your opportunities are pretty limitless. Yeah. I think it's like, I realize, oh, maybe he's not meant to live to like an old age. I have no idea. Right. I have no idea with the medical conditions he has, maybe he'll live really long. I don't know. But when I let go of the ne- like necessity to have him live this life that we, I think like I'm going to say as life. Americans, as we go to school, we do well, we don't get in trouble, we go to college, we meet our mate, we have kids, and then happily ever after. Okay, but I, I really I don't know all of the things that he will or won't do. And quite honestly, I don't worry about it. Because in my mind, he can be equally happy any way you put it. He can be equally happy if he has a little casita next to ours and he lives with us forever. He can be equally happy if he goes and has a hundred kids. I don't know. And when I let go of the one size, the one option of success, it just made me feel so relieved that like that it opened up the access for like me to watch my son be fulfilled in life. And for him to be him. Yes, like, to be him. Exactly. You, yeah. That's really well said. Yes. Yeah. One thing that um, I think that the other profound impact that watching families survive loss has taught me is all of these things that we put value in. I, um, simply put, like they have no value if you're gone, right? Yes. So it's like, I try, I mean, I fail at this, like, I am very imperfect, (laughs) but more than before, it's like, what we have right now is what we have. And like, it's good to plan and to be thoughtful and to be wise, but I have no idea what tomorrow holds. Mm -hmm. Like, the only thing I really know is that I have no idea what it will be like. (laughs) And So all of these like dreams of like, or like the path, and I agree, like if nobody would say, yeah, that's perfect, but that's kind of what we all shoot for. Cause I think we don't really know any other way. Like it's comfortable, but it's like all of those things you shoot for, like can disappear. So like the things that can't disappear, which is like the relationships you have and the legacy you're building and the the way you're inspiring the people around you has way more eternal value than your degree, you know? Yeah. Or and, the end, the end goal. Yeah. I think so. I mean, I'm a life coach. So of course I believe in goals, but less about achieving the thing and more about who you become along the way. Totally. And so you think about, especially in the entrepreneurial space, which I know you, you fall in as well, that, um, <laughs> 
you have to dig deep as, as somebody who, who is owning a business and, you know, figuring out what works and what doesn't work and who you get to become along the way is the gift. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when you, you know, hit a milestone or when you get to help people, like that's an added bonus, but it's, um, and, you know, because the foundation of my coaching is in uh, ontology, which is a big word for really looking at who we're being. So when we get to become somebody like who I think we authentically are, when we rip away the layers of covering up with um, protection and hiding and all the things that just humans do because we're designed to want to stay safe and secure, that that is the real gift is coming out and becoming more you. And so whether it's a mom doing that as she's supporting her child or it's a child being them in their very unique way, then, I mean, that's the gift. That's the gift of all of it. So yes. And then that's the success too. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Let's cut there. Sorry about this abrupt ending. Next week, we're going to pick up right where we left off in an awkward beginning, just like this was an awkward ending. <laughs> so sorry about that. I want you to make sure you do come back because Robin, I think so. A lot of my listeners are like, we don't want just pretty stories. Like we want nitty gritty in the trenches. We want to see ourselves mirrored in our guests. And while Robin is not actually herself a special needs mom, she holds a very unique place as she is essentially the leader of a community, a very large community, where she is part of a community in a very unique way. And she you'll know why she gets this privilege of leading the community once you hear her talk about it and the way that she's able to hold space and to uh, really bring her light into the community without having it be like perfect. Uh, It's very real. It's very relatable and you're going to love hearing from her. So come back next week. We'll see you then. One more thing before we officially, officially wrap up this show Sometimes when I'm listening to podcasts, I have the experience of wanting more. I'm listening at the very end thinking, I sure wish that episode didn't end. I invite you, if you feel in any way the same way, I invite you to the Special Needs Mom podcast community, which is a free group that I host on Facebook, where we as a community of fellow moms who listen to this podcast and are experiencing life in similar shoes, get to talk to one another, get to share stories, get to actually interact. I hope you'll consider joining. See you over there.